<laughs> Love it. All right. So, um, okay. So first I kind of wanted to see how everyone's Thanksgiving was, how you feel like it went. Did you use, Hey Jess, um, did you use any of the strategies we talked about? Um, I guess it's been two weeks, right? Since we saw each other and just kind of general feelings around the holiday and your food and how things went. So anybody can start how it went for you. All right, I'll fess up. So I did really good with all the food until the dessert came out and gosh, darn it. But it's not like I overate. It just put me in this huge sugar high. Mm-hmm. And then I felt like crap after I came down off of it. Like literally, I think I was telling you guys, I felt like I was, I had like a day drinking hangover. Yeah. It was horrible. Yeah. That's kind of what it feels like. Like I, the day one, I hit more sugar than normal. And by that night I had a headache. And the next day I was like, okay, I got to lay off any sugar today because I'm just like, blah. Yeah. 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 So that's how mine went. That doesn't sound bad though. Just sounds like you learned a lesson, right? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> now you know you do it in increments when you want to have your know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, someone else fess up. I know someone else has got it. <laughs> All right, Lily, what was yours? Oh, I'm still eating Thanksgiving. So I'm still yeah, I told you, <laughs> you're gonna have food poisoning. Like you need to like stick that stuff in the freezer or in the garbage. That's no, too- <laughs> it's going garbage I finished I finished my my lunch this morning I I just had a, like literally like a ton of veggies that were baked veggies and so they, and then I had sweet potato yams and um you know ham and turkey and stuff I did I did good except for my champagne take <laughs> so <laughs> I I might have over beverage on my champagne take. but you knew you were gonna do it so you know it wasn't it, like it, it was unplanned no <laughs> No, it's a thing with my family. We when we get together for the holidays or people's birthdays, we drink champagne and we just know that we're gonna drink a lot of champagne. And I tried to make sure that I definitely got my water in, which I did, uh, and that definitely helped not have a hangover the next day because all the sugar in the champagne used to give me a really bad hangover when um I didn't get my water in. So right. Still worked out every day. I still got my water in and lots of veggies. Uh, lots of champagne though. So. Yeah. <laughs> and and good tip there from when we had the uh, podcast about alcohol, right? Cold shower helps on a hangover <laughs> and uh, electrolytes, making sure like hydrates a great thing to have. If you've had some alcohol to help uh, balance the electrolytes and feel a little better the next day. I definitely had my hydrate, but I have my head every morning now. So <laughs> Anybody else want to share? I did not eat an entire pan of homemade mac and cheese, but I definitely ate my fair share of macaroni and cheese and it was delicious. <laughs> and I am so sorry about any of it. Yeah, I don't think you should. I, we also had someone make homemade macaroni and cheese and it was worth every scoop. Like, I'm like, this is amazing. All right. So it sounds like everybody had a good time. And, you know, I think like reflecting back on this, going into our topic for tonight of how to find the joy in your nutrition over, over December, um, part of it is an expectation, right? Like whatever, like if, if you're going into December and your expectation is that this is the month you're going to drop, you know, 50 pounds in 10 days and because you want to look amazing on the 25th or whatever, and but you know you have all these holiday parties or you know you have lots of commitments or you know your schedule's crazy, then maybe your expectation isn't quite matching up with how the month goes. So I think what's most important about finding your joy in things is easing the expectations to reality so that you're not automatically setting yourself up for this huge failure or feeling bad. So if you know December is crazy for you, if you know you're a stress eater, if you know it's stressful, then you need to go into it with some grace and make sure the meals you can change, right? The meals you can affect, the meals that you're in charge of, they're great and that they 
you know, meet your needs and that they're part of the plan and that they help you feel good. They're foods that, you know, you feel good on because then when you have those other holiday meals or party meals, or if you have stressful times and you're stress eating, it's not like this giant ebb and flow, right? It's not like a huge roller coaster you're on and you're on this high and then low and you, you're trying to keep things even so that you're just feeling your best through the whole thing. Cause that's how you feel good, right? Is that you feeling like I'm feeding myself well, I'm feeling good about things. I don't feel guilty. I don't feel shame for things. I think that's where we really just get so bogged down. Like if we're expecting ourselves, because this is the month, like maybe you're going to see some family member at a party or whatever it is, right? Whatever happens. And you're like, oh, I just want to look amazing. And I just want, but you're going to look amazing if you have a smile on your face, right? And you feel good with what you're wearing and you just feel confident. It's not about what the number says. So changing that kind of mindset to go into this month to say, what's a good, like, what can I accomplish this month? Right. I know in my group, we're, we're set to accomplish 15 workouts at least, you know, we're not setting the bar at 30. <laughs> we're setting the bar at 15. We're going to move our bodies. We're going to really focus on, you know, making sure the meals we're creating are great meals and do our best at the other times or plan to have some splurges, right. Just to make things feel good. So what do you guys think helps you most like helps you feel the best if you're coming into a month like this. I know we have a lot of coaches on here. So it's like, what do you feel like helps you have a great December, feel good about how you're doing during this kind of crazy holiday time? Hitting my water goals. Yeah, it's a great one. I agree with you setting realistic goals. Like I know I'm, I have a lot of parties. I'm going to drink. It's just, is what it is. So I need to work that into my plan and maybe not have a bunch of carbs at breakfast and lunch. If I'm going to go out and have a, at a party at night. Um, and, or if I'm going to go drink and, you know, we have a wine party on Saturday, I know I'm going to drink wine so I can have a really good nutritious, you know, week and then, but be planning for that. And so I think it's, it's just setting your expectations of, okay, you know, like you said, I'm, I know that I'm going to drink and just be okay with it and accept it and control the things that you can control. Um, like your workouts, your water, getting your vegetables in, getting your pro, you know, your shakeology. And I, th I think that's, those are keys for what I'm mm -hmm. definitely. For. Yeah. So. And definitely getting that protein in and, and your veggies, because getting good nutrition in, in the in-between times help not get the cravings too out of control, right? Having the Shakeology as your, as your dessert so that you're not spiraling, right? Because I know there's times where you start into some sugary desserts and then it's like, it just kind of continues versus, you know, making, you know, getting back to your base so that you don't have the cravings kind of get overwhelming feeling. That's, that's kind of where I'm trying to get my mindset to the point where like that, um, that I don't get to the point in the month where I'm like, oh, screw it. I'll just eat whatever I want the last two weeks. Like I'm just, because I mean, it's at school or, you know, there's just this time of year, there's always something in the faculty room. Like there's always, so, you know, if I eat a muffin in the morning, then by lunch, then I'm more likely to have another, whatever's left in there. You know, like it just, I'm just yeah. trying not to spiral out and to just like, be like, this is, not the last brownie I'll ever eat on the earth, you know, like, just feel, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I, it kind of goes back to what we talked about um, two weeks ago with picking the things that seem like they're going to be the most enjoyable too. Like, so if you've got the whole table, be like, oh, okay, this looks like something I'll really enjoy. So I'll have this and these others don't really matter because while they might like be sugary in the initial like it's not going to satisfy something. You know what I mean? So it's like finding that treat, have it, make sure you're having your other good foods along with it and, and move on. Right. Plus actually for me, like, I know that if I eat, let's go back to the brand. If I eat one brownie that it's not going to be 
easier for me to say, oh, I don't need the second one. Like, it'll be harder for me to say, like, it's like, I want it more, the more sugar I eat, the more I want it. So it doesn't, yeah. it's kind of like, I just have to get in the right mindset. So, and then, so Kim, what about making, like, what if you brought your own treats with you, like these Shakeology cookies, right? Like, so what if you brought that with you? And so then you had those when other people are having whatever sugary treat they're having. It's true. I mean, I thought, uh, I thought it would be a good month for me to, to really have, um, be like, kind of like proactive and have like, maybe have a shake mid morning at work or something like that. Yeah. Just so that, especially the chocolate ones, like the vanilla doesn't satisfy my sweet craving, but chocolate surely does. Like if I have the chocolate shake, um, I, I feel like I've had a treat. You yeah. Know? Like, yeah. And exactly. I love vanilla. Don't get me wrong. I really love it. But like, um, but cho- there's something more satisfying about the chai. I just, I just ordered another bag of chocolate so, for that reason. Yeah. I think that's a great plan because you then are giving yourself a treat and it's a treat that you have nothing to feel bad about, right? Like there's, and not that you should feel bad about food anyway. I don't, you know what I mean? That's not where we're at here, but just that you, you can be like, this is an amazing treat and I feel totally satisfied with this, you know? And if, if you want, you know, like maybe this is the month where you make your Shakeology, but you um, maybe make it a little fancier, like use some of the recipes on the blog. So I'm usually Mm -hmm. like a cauliflower rice and, you know, cup of fruit and some shake. Right. So maybe you kind of dress it up a little bit this time and try a new recipe or try something that's a little bit more decadent, um, and see how that is in, you know, in place of some other things. Or even like a Shakeology mug cake, you know, like that. that, that So filling. Yeah. Yeah. I did the I think it was the recover mug cake. Is there a recover mug cake now too? I don't know. That sounds delicious. I think it was recover. Mug. I've been, I've done the recover hot chocolate twice and that is so, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. I think I'm going to do mine though. I'm going to try it with just water next time because I've been doing it with the milkadamia milk. And I think that like when I get to the bottom, I get some like little clusters. So I don't know if it's the uh, milkadamia milk that's kind of, I don't know, clustering up a little bit. So I'm going to try it with just water <laughs> next time and see how it is. <laughs> I do half and half. So I do half of the milk and half water. That's a good idea. Yeah, maybe yeah. I'll try that. And it's I pretty, look at my recipe. I didn't even good. remember a liquid. I just thought it was like a banana, Shakeology. And then I, I, I don't know. I have to find the recipe again. Oh, yeah, so we're, we're talking about the hot chocolate. Oh, the hot chocolate. Right. Oh, but the, chocolate. the mug cake I made, I'm pretty sure it just had a little bit of milk shakeology and then, and, and it had, um, a little, you put a little pocket of peanut butter in it in the middle and it, there wasn't much to it. Isn't and there I, egg in there as well? One. Huh? I was thinking there was an egg I in there. there was an, I thought there was an egg in that as well. Well, I don't think. I yeah. Think cause the mug cake is look really it up good. Because I think this might be the recover one. There is one with an egg in it though. Yeah, I think that's right. I don't think that's the one I made though. Cause I don't think I did an egg. While you're looking it up, Dana, is there a specific workout program that you guys are doing for the 15 days? So no, in my group, it's just open. To, it's whatever. Um, mm-hmm. But um, everybody's kind of, I still have to finish up healthy obsession. That would be a great one to jump into mm-hmm. if you have body. Um, and then there's going to be a slate play rides. Um, I, don't know. I saw that, but I wasn't really understanding what it was. <laughs> so basically it's just rides. They're it's just like, doing yeah. a ride each day that is themed to be these sleigh rides. And then they'll live together in this one tile, you know, that's all about the December sleigh ride kind of thing. Um, And then I'm trying to think of, well, I mean, sure thing comes out if you wanted to start it early too. What is that? So it's Megan's new program. It's going to be, I would say some like MBF, but also some of the other styles of training she likes to do. So it still, it seems like it's going to be some high rep, good volume, muscle building type. Yeah. Type uh, workout. But we are starting the group on the 6th. If you want to, or I mean, sorry, the 2nd of January, if you want to do it together. Well, the, the, the Megan Davies program. Yeah. 
the fourth and eighth week are deload weeks. So it's it's a it's three weeks of like full on workouts, and then the fourth week is a deload week, and then so it's eight weeks total. Nice. So, yeah. Okay, I am Kim. I'm just gonna put this in the um. Let's see here. I'll put it in the stronger together coach or maybe here. Let's. I just found the recipe. It's a it's a mug cake. Um. Here, let me do this. Of course, then Sandra, you don't get that. Okay, let me find it on here, and then we can, then I can put it in the chat. I okay. think I had searched yeah. last time until I found a recipe that had the ingredients I had at home, and then I used <laughs> that. One. This one is super. I've done the same thing. <laughs> oh, that's what I do now. What do we have at home? Uh, I'll make this. Okay. Okay, and copy. Let's come back to the Zoom. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, enter. Okay, so there it is. Um, it's really simple. It's um. I feel like it was just recover some liquid and peanut butter. Hmm. Yeah, recover. Oh, baking powder is what makes it lift. Almond milk, peanut butter. So right up your alley, Kim. Peanut butter in the middle. And it was like, it was super filling. Like I had that for dinner one night. So I was like, I can't even eat anything else. Cause I'm like, oh, I want to try it. And, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so full. <laughs> I might have it for dinner right now. <laughs> Give it a go. Perfect. Um, so any other thoughts on, you know, like, I guess how you how you want to find your joy this month or, or what you would recommend, like, I, I kind of feel like focusing on the things happening, right? When you, this is, this is all kind of stuff we talked about too, going into Thanksgiving, but you know, like if you're going to a party, focusing on the party and not, not the food or not the drink, right? Focusing on the event, focusing on the season versus, um, you know, all the sweets and treats and things like that. And I know that's hard because there's so much of like emotion wrapped up in, you know, certain family things, right? Like if you've, you know, somebody always makes these peanut butter cookies with the chocolate kisses in the middle or whatever, right? Whatever your favorite treat is that someone else brings or makes. So it can be difficult, but, you know, allowing yourself to have those things, but also not making it so tied to that, that, you know, kind of ruins things. <laughs> You guys are really chatty tonight. <laughs> I feel like I'm... I think one of the one of the things that I'm going to try to do is um, track my food better mm. when I'm not at at the holiday party or I'm not out drinking my champagne or I'm not eating the the this candy or whatever. So I think that's what I'm going to do is just really hone in on tracking better, so that way I'm eating better. So all, I can allow myself yeah. the grace for all that other stuff. Right. So the in-between times is you'll, mm -hmm. you'll know exactly what you're having. Yeah. 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 I think I, after Thanksgiving, I had quite a bit of, um, non gut protocol friendly foods and I felt fine. I didn't overeat during that time, which I think helps me personally a lot to feel well and, but afterwards, I'm kind of like, oh, I think I'd really like to go back into more gut protocol foods and just kind of be in that, you know, kind of state through this month. But if something comes up, like um, pre-David getting sick, we were planning on heading to Hood River and going out to dinner. I wasn't going to select something gut protocol. I was just going to have whatever sounded good. So, you know, things like that where you have, um, you know, when you have a party or something, it's like just having what you'd like to have, you know, the rest of the time you you're feeling good already. Your body is handling things well. Um, and just, you're in a better state of kind of then returning back to that too, after you've had different meals, holiday parties, whatever's happening. I think that's the thing, Kim, you mentioned like, you know, just kind of an effort, right? Like 
months almost over, right? Or I'm I'm not I'm gonna just wait until January. But there's so much time and there's so much we can do between now and then. And it doesn't have to be about weight loss. It's just about feeding yourself in a way that you feel good, right? To handle the stress, to handle whatever happens during the holidays. You just feel like different. Oh, of course the doctor's calling. Talk amongst yourselves for just a second. <laughs> We're talking about uh, gingerbread houses and and the frosting. Oh, <laughs> here I don't know. <laughs> My daughter's trying to make her own right now. Her own frosting or her the own frosting? gingerbread? We need we need the frosting. The frosting is like rock hard. Oh, so we oh. Need the oh. Yeah. Well, sometimes you can just heat it up in the microwave. Not that no. I. No. It's, it's been a hot like minute since I've had it. It makes it like cake consistency. It's weird. Oh. oh. Well, regular frosting is not hard to make. It's just all yeah. sugar. So, you know. Yeah. Like powdered sugar. And yes. Yeah. But then she can eat it if she makes it, though. <laughs> yep. made better her than you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's yeah. too sweet. I'd rather have a, the, have you guys had, tried the hot chocolate, the caramel brownie? Oh my gosh. I've had a regular chocolate. One, the Hot chocolate. chocolate. No, I, I, yeah. I'm having a hard time giving up the caramel brownie for a recipe because I just love it so much. That's a shame. Yeah. I wonder if it really tastes much different than, so if it was actually in a recipe for like cookies, would it taste much oh. different than the regular chocolate? I think it will. Because it, I think, think it, it I think it's going to taste more, I think it's going to taste more like caramel than just chocolate. Oh. I mean, to me, it's just so much, it's so decadent. I, yeah, yeah. it is my I favorite just feel flavor like ever. Save, save that for like an, an actual shake and then just use regular chocolate for the cookies and stuff. I know <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Cause I'm like, cause that would add a little bit of extra, like extra flavor for you though like yeah that's true because that cookie yeah. that everybody's talking about doesn't that include that chocolate or that caramel yes one yes whatever? yes so yes. For me, it, it takes two something. packets yeah and then i'm like the one we're I, making like, sunday want to like run people away from the cookies like no you don't want those you don't want those cookies right you want to really save it just just like <laughs> i hoarded my vanilla chai shakeology and didn't let anybody else have any because it's so good <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah it would be yeah i know and well but they they have peanut butter or sun butter which i'll use sun butter peanut butter would definitely be a powerful flavor in it so i don't know i don't know if hmm. the peanut butter flavor would overpower the caramel hmm. flavor sounds like you need to try it I, yeah I, I think so I don't know those salted caramel pecan bars. Oh, um, those were yeah. those were pretty darn good, and I just made those with regular chocolate. Yeah, they really were. They were really so good. they were they were pretty good. I don't know if they, they made were. a difference. I still want to try those. Uh, Maybe one day. They're, they're so really good. good bars. The Snicker bars were delicious. Yeah, I haven't were. done those yeah. yet. They're so good. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, they're they're very rich. I know Kate made them multiple times. When we made them with Diana, Diana the one day, I go, well, how many, how many times have you had those, Kate? She goes, I think this is my third or fourth batch I've made. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong if you're watching this, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> she did. Yeah. She's like, she loves them. She actually made some cookies today with, um, with Lucy because Lucy was home and she made it with Cafe Latte. Oh, oh! And she did a reel. Of, so, what kind of cookie? I don't know. I mean, it's a reel. She did one. I mean, it, everything's everything's there. Let me see. I don't oh. know if I, so I a, might like, be able to can of coffee. Then interesting. Hmm. Yeah, she said it's very. I mean, you know, the cafe latte flavor definitely is there. But yeah, it's hmm. gluten free and vegan. <laughs> Taramazoo cookies? Is there a recipe for that? Oh, I don't know. Doesn't sound like it. 
progress. Maybe she made it herself. Like she came up with the idea herself. Oh, um, maybe. But yeah, I mean, she doesn't have the recipe in it. She has people DM her if she wants, or it's no, maybe, maybe she actually has it in her. Oh, it is. It's a blog one. The tiramisu no bake cookies. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Tiramisu no bake cookies. So I did see them somewhere. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Might have been an email I got for everybody to try. Like I, I love that. I don't know, but and I like that we in the meal prep class that we always have a dessert to show people that you can still eat healthy and have your dessert too. Because mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. you're still gonna have your dessert. You just, you know, you can have a healthier version of it. Okay. Yeah. What yeah, I meant is like the me. slowest talker <laughs> ever. We're talking about dessert and shakeology, how yummy it is. There's so bar. many good ones. I know. What the um, yeah, and well, we've started adding in obviously on the uh the meal prep class to try some of them out, but yeah, and they're I think you know, like from what they've said on the nutrition mission nutrition, this is just gonna you know, multiply, like the blog is just going to have more and more different recipe options, shakes, desserts, especially baked now that they've done the R and D for it. So like, I don't even know if we talked about that detail, but they, um, like they hadn't done the research to know what changed. And so that's what changed now with Emily. I can't remember what's her last name, Emily, the not Bob. Yeah. I can't Fritz. think of her name either. Fritz. Fritz. Fritz, thank you. Fritz. Uh, with Dr. Emily Fritz, when she came on, like, so that was one of the tasks, right? To to go through and see if you bake Shakeology, what changes, right? Does it diminish the protein or the fiber were the first two things that they did. And I don't know if they'll go in to see if it changes any of the other superfood content, but um, those main things didn't change. And so now they're like, oh, okay, so let's start baking with it. Let's let's turn it into some other treats. Because the nice thing is like with these cookies, we're not adding any sugar in. You know, it's just the sweetness of the Shakeology that is sweetening the cookie. So um, I want to say it was like two grams per cookie of sugar. I can't remember, of added sugar. So it's really small compared to what, you know, having a regular cookie um, and, and still like you could sneak it in on maintenance on the gut protocol, even, <laughs> you know what I mean? Things like that, which is kind of nice, um, to have those options. Yeah. I like, I like that. I can still feel like I'm eating dessert, but I'm eating a healthier version of it and I'm not getting so much sugar. I mean, I, I love Costco's pecan pie, but oh my God, it must just like sugar and then a couple of pecans <laughs> like yeah. i mean it's it's delicious but i mean i had literally one slice out of the whole pie and i couldn't eat anymore like that yeah. was enough like I, I didn't have any more after that so um yeah make your pecan pie next year it's not hard and then you can control it because mine wasn't overly sweet now compare it to the basket cheesecake it was really sweet because the sourness of the cheesecake <laughs> it's like what's wrong with this pairing it was not a good pairing not at all <laughs> but yeah if you make it well because I use I do it's it's maple syrup it's still sweet don't get me wrong but mm. it's it's just not I, I guess it's just not as sweet mm -hmm. yeah I saw what I've seen a couple of recipes that use honey too because then it also helps with the holding it together, you know, that mm -hmm. just kind of how it, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know what you call it, the coagulation of it. Gels. Yeah. yeah it together. coagulates. Yeah. Cause I mean, wow. it is, it's eggs, it's eggs for, for mine, it's eggs, maple syrup, coconut oil. I think that's it. And then the yeah, nuts. Yeah, there's not much to it. And no. Then Vanilla. Vanilla. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. And then, yeah, heck a lot of pecans that you just toasted. I mean, the, the hardest part for me is literally making the gluten-free crust pie crust and getting it in the pan. That is always the biggest challenge out of everything. So, yeah. 
Yeah. And I feel like, you know, it's funny with this shift that we have going on. I think it's like, it makes Shakeology feel more fun. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like taking a health food and making it more exciting and fun. Cause it's not like it changed, but we're kind of changing how we feel about it too. And to make it more desserty and a treat and fun, but it still fits within our plans, you know, just as well. And that's the nice thing um, to just kind of have, you know, you feel like you're not missing things. Like each day that I have a Shakeology, I feel like I've had some kind of sweet. So. Well, I noticed too, when I have Shakeology, specifically the chocolate one to Kim's point, that I don't crave like sweets or anything. It doesn't even matter. I'm just not interested in it. And I really like that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I like have forever been drinking the chocolate vegan Shakeology. It's like my favorite. Yeah. And there's a, I think we found a fudge for that one too. That was like, Mm -hmm. banana. yeah. And chocolate Shakeology. You'll have to check that one out. That's on the blog too. That blog is a dearth of information and so it many is. great recipes. Like sometimes yeah. I find myself on there. I'm like, why don't I use this more often? There's so many amazing like foods and recipes that you can try. And they're so easy. They really are. Um, and, and honestly, like the fixate and the body stuff, it's, it's the same, right? I mean, cause they're not any more or less complicated there. There's just more options. Um, and so it's, it's really, I love having that search bar to just be able to run in there and, you know, like chicken or ground chicken or whatever, like you can get a little specific and just see what pops up and start meal planning from there. Like, like you guys were saying, you know, what do I have in my pantry or what did I pull out? You know, what, what's there and just stick that in the recipes and see what you can do. But yeah, so many people forget about the blog too. (laughs) so any um I don't know any concerns everybody seems like they're doing pretty good with things any concerns or issues or questions on any of the the stuff the nutrition plans I just got to focus more on my moving (laughs) Now, are you running now or are you working on workouts more? <clears throat> I'm trying to figure out the best of everything. Because mm-hmm. um, the next, like I said, it all depends on money. My next half marathon I'd like to do, there's actually a few of them. It's in September. Mm-hmm. So I really want to get better by then. So and the more research I'm doing, it's like they say, don't just run every day. Don't um, do the long miles. Don't focus on that. You need the muscle too. Yeah. And that's what they said. It's like a lot of times you're going to hurt yourself if you don't have the muscle and actually the muscle will take you further. So I'll probably start doing more of, um, was it the breakaway? Yeah. I was just going to say, have we talked about 30 day breakaway? Because that program is amazing. And a lot of runners have felt, even if they were seasoned runners felt that that program benefited them. So I think I'm just going to kind of get, you know, a lot of it, but I've kind of been in a bad mind frame last few weeks and still, especially with the holidays right now, my mind is just so it's like, I go, even if I just go out and walk, if I don't get a workout in, cause sometimes, yeah. you know, you need to do it, but I don't even know how to describe the feeling. It's almost like too much when your mind is not all there. So it's like, even if I just get out and walk, it's like, it's moving. Yeah. So yeah. That's just and the no, way I'm taking it. And I think that's great. Like if, if, if today the walk is all you felt like you can do, that's totally enough right? Because it's getting, it's like getting yourself back out (laughs) to get into the routine, but you're, you're helping yourself keep something, right? You're keeping something in place. Yeah. Walking. And sometimes just the walk quiet, it just helps. Yeah. It at least helps for the moment. (laughs) Then I get back home to reality and it's like, uh, but I mean, my eating, yeah, you know, I mean, it hasn't been awful, 
but you know, did a little bit of dessert and I really haven't been too much in wanting sugar. You know, so just go with it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, and you can break her workout up too. Like you could do weights one day, run one day and make it longer. Right. Um, Cause most, I think almost every day it's like a, a run and weights, but, or there's a lot of days like that, but you know, you can, however you want to do it. Right. But um, that would definitely be the program to do. And then also a lot of people will do lift four with running mm-hmm. because <clears throat> the four days a week right, are getting some good lifting in. Um, and then you can kind of break up your running a little bit. Yeah, no, I didn't finish everything there. So I'll probably kind of do a combination of everything. Yeah. Just as long as I'm moving and then eventually I'll get into the. You'll find your groove. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Once the worst of the stress, if I can ever get rid of it, that's the hardest part right now. So yeah. A lot of mental breakdowns. (laughs) I'm sorry. sorry. And I'm good. I'm glad to see you here. Right. Like that matters. Yes. Like the fact that you're still working hard at it and like, yeah. you know, putting yourself in a place to benefit. That's, that's the important part. Yep. I know there's definitely times we've all had to lean into the group <laughs> to uh, really just kind of get through some difficult seasons and feel fortunate to just have this group. It's nice to know, like, if you want to pop on the morning workouts, there's always going to be somebody on there and, you know, cheering you on and helping you get it done. Oh yeah. Definitely need to get back to that. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, and I should mention too. So, um, another coach Carol has brought up, um, you know, the idea of like, if someone wants to jump on and meal prep on Sundays, even if it's not like a scheduled meal prep day. So you might see messages if you're in the um, Stronger Together virtual gym chat where people are like, hey, I'm going to get on and cook today or I'm going to get some meal prep done. So that's ha- that's what's happening there. And so if, you know, if there's a time, you know, on Sundays tends to be the meal prep, but ob- any time, honestly, you could probably just write in that chat to be like, does anybody cooking right now and want to cook together (laughs) or just hang out while I cook. Um, that's the great place to kind of throw that in there and, uh, have some camaraderie while you're meal prepping. Is there actually, can you add us to the group? Yes. Are you in that virtual gym? I'm in that group. Yeah. Let me add you right now. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that virtual gym, every time I try to click the link, it just takes me. Oh, are you not in it right now? No, it's like I would, uh, you put it on a few times and I would click on it and it would just bring me to everything I've already got. It's like, oh, weird. Let's see here. Then technology is weird on my end. Okay. I should have just added you. Thank you. Yeah, it's a great place. So like, that's where we're talking about, hey, we're jumping on or, you know. Lily posts really bad pictures of me on there while, <laughs> while I'm in the Yeah, room. me too. Yeah. Thanks, Lily. <laughs> we'll talk with her on that on the side, but no. We're yeah. being real. We're being real. <laughs> Showing everybody that we're not perfect. Yep. We're being real. All right. <laughs> where's Lily's real picture? Yeah. Where's your real uh, picture? <laughs> any of them. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I there's- don't there's usually somebody on it or in the virtual gym starting at what is it 5 a.m I think five and or going five all the way yeah yeah going all the way till about I want to say one. I'm usually on there till about 10 yeah I'm usually on there till yeah. about 10 pacific so that's one eastern and then eastern some time so mm-hmm. in the afternoon too well I know better and I think, than tomorrow because Vetus is doing his like one or two o'clock workout and 4 p.m central yeah so kate and i will be on there yeah so whenever you want to get work out pop in there and send a message hey i'm jumping on anybody else jump you want to jump on you might inspire somebody to work out so Mm -hmm. totally true yeah that's been a really i mean i've I've been on there for a while like for a couple hours and it usually only goes maybe like 30 minutes until somebody pops on so there's usually somebody always on, which is fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yep. And now we'll use that too. Like if you want to meal prep in between the um, meal prep classes. So yeah. Yeah. That's, that's our whole stronger together vibe <laughs> all together. <laughs> Me and my dark circles and bags. Uh, we can't see them. So you don't have to worry about it because we all have them. Yeah, we all have them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you think about it, all the people out there that don't have this community to be able to do that, you know, I think it's just wonderful. So, yeah, I mean, it, it really is like, you think about, like, mm -hmm. there's a lot of, I shouldn't say there's not as many anymore, but there's mornings where I'm like, if there wasn't a group online, I'd be like, eh, I don't think I need to work out today, <laughs> but then I'm, I'm tired. Like, I'm just going to walk out to the garage and I'm just going to get on because I know they're already <laughs> on there and I'm going to chat and then I'll just get it done because I know once I'm on there with everybody, it's not like I'm going to be on there and be like, nope, I'm just going to watch you work out and I'm not going to work out today. Don't be a creeper, right. Deanna. Just, just go for it. <laughs> just go for it. <laughs> my hardest time the last couple of weeks, I mean, besides my mental, um, some mornings it's just been, we've had that roller coaster with the weather mm. and it's like we've had some mornings it's down to 27 and it's like I have a hard time getting out of bed yeah yeah <laughs> I'm like I just want to stay here and then it's like okay if I'm out the cat wakes me up gets me out it's like okay I want a huge cup of coffee yeah just where do you live up. Sandra huh where do you live just south of Atlanta so right now we're okay, well it was it was 20 degrees 24 degrees here this morning <laughs> it was cold yeah mm -hmm. yeah and it's going <laughs> Seattle so <laughs> yeah we have no snow or no school for the third day in a row now oh they already canceled tomorrow huh well no tomorrow oh. is day three oh, so we'll give up. No. wow we should hopefully be able to go to school tomorrow because it stopped snowing but we still have a ton of snow everywhere Lily's sending her kids to school whether it's open or not right she's like you're <laughs> right to go. and just go and just what they want yeah just what they want to do is be off for two days and then have to go to school on a Friday yeah <laughs> at least know, Friday, right four days though at least they're only no. there for three hours on Fridays yeah well yesterday we got like up to 70 something oh that's we had a low of but we had like a low of 35 Look I behind think. you. And then we've had yeah. other days where it's been like a low <laughs> of 27 and we didn't get above 50. So it's like I said, it's literally a roller coaster of the weather right now down here. It's like, it doesn't know what it wants to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we got above 33 today. <laughs> <Oof>. <laughs> yeah. I don't miss that. <laughs> we don't get that normally, but every once in a while we'll get a sn huge snowstorm so I mean I remember Michigan we would get some days where it was below zero you know didn't yeah. get above you know yeah. 15 I don't That's miss it <laughs> yeah and you know I think that part of that whole thing is creating the habit right and and you know another call I'm sure we will have at some point is is habit stacking and associating a, a new habit with something you already do mm -hmm. so that it just becomes second nature to add that habit in like it, like my mornings are just pretty much the same every morning mm -hmm. right like you know it's like I roll down I have my first thing I get one kid out the door then I get the other kid out and I make sure I've got the oatmeal mix and the uh energize ready take him to school come back come out and eat it with everybody on zoom <laughs> and then yeah. and then I get my workout done and it's like but those all kind of and so like days are that are different um it like feels weird like today was a different day because it's like I had to go to this appointment and then I'm like I didn't have any oatmeal made and so I ended up having a beach bar for breakfast and I'm like this is weird because I'm like I'm just totally unprepared for this day so yeah, and then, but it's like on those habit stacking and those days, you're just like, it just flows, right? It just, you're not mm -hmm. thinking about it. It's just part of what you do. And that's where you get to with your nutrition too. Like it's just putting a vegetable on every plate. It's just part of what you do, right? Or, you know, making sure there's a balance on your plate, protein, you know, veggie, carb, whatever it is, just making sure you have those foods made around, 
it's all part of the deal, which is what we do. Right. And you just Mm -hmm. continue to get better at it and you continue to have less times that you stray from it is what I found over the years. It's like, you know, maybe in the beginning you'd skip a week of workouts and then you'd be like, oh, okay, we're do it. And now it's like, I just don't even miss a workout, right? Like I just plan a rest day if I have to miss one. Like yeah. there is, you know, it's just part of what happens. So, you know, it's, it, that's, I think the hard part is people want to make a change fast or they want a result fast. And so you're, you're like, okay, well, I have to do this, this, and this, but then something gets messed up your habit didn't get created and you're like, doesn't work or, you know, F this, you know, it's not Oregon. Right. And, but it takes time. It takes going through the motions. It takes the practice of creating those habits of getting your body and your mind doing those things every single day for it really to become second nature. And you're kind of fighting years of not doing it. So that's why sometimes it takes a little longer. Well, and sometimes when you try to change too much at once, it, you get overwhelmed very easily. And right. so it, it, if you do the habit stacking, like you're talking about, where you focus on just getting your water in, and then you focus on, you know, getting your workout in and every day, and you focus on getting vegetables in every, every meal. I mean, those are things that you can do and not have to do them all at once. Right. Then, and then like Kim said, oh, forget it. I just, you know, I screwed up. I'm done. I'm not going to do it anymore. And so, yeah, forming those habits. And, and I mean, some people can do it. Some people can change overnight and just draw a line in the sand. But I think most people are, they just have so much going on in their life that it's so hard to change everything at once. So forming those habits one at a time, it's much easier. And I try not to let that stuff happen, but like, it's, like I said, the mental thing, it's our lives right now are just such an upheaval. Yeah. That first, you know, that turkey's probably pretty years, good and warm, babe. I've been have working so hard that I would have periods where I was focused, trying to keep a schedule going and stuff, but you get to yeah. the point like right now, it makes yeah. it hard. It does. And, you know, and, and, and in that time, I, what I hope you feel like is this is a a challenging season and I can come back. Like I can, I can resume, you know, like I can come back to a different way or another way or the way I want to be, you know, as we're getting through this. Well, and that's why it's like, even with the, you know, it's, I get my days where I'm beating myself up over the workouts, but then I'm like, no, if I just even take the walk, I just got to count it as a win. You know, because at least it's moving. Yep where I can't just beat myself up because I didn't do a workout. Cause right. then if I do that, then I just won't be back. Right. Yeah. You, Cause you'll be miserable too. And mm-hmm. you'll just, you'll associate this guilt and awful feeling with working out where you really want to associate feeling good and glad you did something right. Mm-hmm not so negative on the, that you didn't, but glad you did and focusing on the positive part of the things you're doing for sure. I don't know if you've read the book by John Acuff called finish. If you haven't, it's really good. I love anything John Acuff. I'm not going to lie. So good. He's so funny. I just finished his recent book called soundtracks. And that was mm-hmm. really cool. It was about like overthinking but in finish, he talks about how people set goals. Like I'm going to run, you know, like a hundred miles in a year. And then you get to like March and you're like, Oh, sweet baby Jesus. I'm not running a hundred miles in a year. So what am I going to do? And he said, you know, at that point, just cut it in half and say, you're going to run 50 miles. He said, because then even though you've cut it in half, you're still accomplishing it. And you feel like you've got that sense of accomplishment. And I think about that when I think about my goals and what I want to do, I'm like, oh, well, yeah, I want to do this. But if I cut it in half, it's like far more manageable and I'm still achieving it. It doesn't make it any less of a goal or any less of an achievement because I've just cut it in half. Yes. hundred percent. Totally agree. Yeah. It's like getting away from the result. We really have to get into the, the journey piece of it, right. You have to be about the daily piece of things. And like, if today things just didn't happen, then let's focus on tomorrow and let's focus on making each day, like 
what you can do and the best you can do it. I think that or, other or even did. half assed, right? Or even half assed at it and just but you did it, right? So that's yeah. some days it's well, that was that was my half marathon. Yeah. <laughs> I walked most of it, but I showed up and I did it. Still finished. Yep, still finished. Doesn't make any less of a half marathon if you walked it, crawled it, or ran it. You got it done. Okay. I've not done a half marathon. <laughs> I wouldn't crawl it. I would just lay down at the start line and be like, yeah, this is good. I did it. Well, <laughs> so kudos to you. Well, by the sure. time I get to like the finish line, it's like, cause I guess the biggest thing people tell me, it's like, no matter how much you don't have energy, you're just supposed to bolt for it. I'm like, I was literally, I mean, at least in the pictures, it wasn't there, but in my mind, I'm like, I'm crying because it's like, I had no, you know, no more yeah. at that point. It's like my leg was cramping or my calf was cramping. It was going up my leg. I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I did it. But you did it. Yeah. Well yeah. And feel awesome about that and know that you can do other hard things, right? You can like, that's just one step in believing more, knowing more about you, which I'm not ready to take on a marathon yet. I'm doing more <laughs> half marathons first, but <laughs> yeah, you know, and that, that it's all good, right? Because it's like, you have this great accomplishment that you can build on now, or you can just even like, maybe you're like, I'm going to do something other than running. Right. Cause you can be like, I tried something new. I did a half marathon and maybe now I want to try skiing or whatever it is. Right. It's like, you can, the, the thing I love about is you can take it in different directions and it doesn't mean you're failing in any way or giving up on something like you can do something different if that different thing feels where you should be and what you should be doing yeah move over we form our, yeah I think sometimes we form our identity around something you know like I 100% was coffee and like I'm like you can take the coffee out of my cold dead hands and there's lots of days I don't even have coffee anymore and I'm like meh I'm still Deanna <laughs> You're still living didn't kill you still still just fine still doing my thing what was that guy's name again i know i have like John have Acuff. yeah -F -F. and if you have a, the hoopla app for your library card you can listen to his books for free on audio and he's always really good on the audio because he reads his own books he okay. is he's so nodding your head she knows like his books are amazing on tape yeah. I, he's one of my very favorite people i'd like to go see him in person sometime yeah. he's he doesn't awesome. have a bad book like they're all good yeah, yeah they're fantastic my daughter's got a job what like is it the hoop hoopla app Hoopla. Yeah. If you have a, bit, a business card, sweet Jesus. If you have a library card, um, it's been a very long day. Uh, if you have a library card, there's a Hoopla mm -hmm. app that connects and you can download, like you can listen to audiobooks, and he has a lot of his books on the Hoopla app. Okay. Perfect. Library card, not business card. <laughs> right. Yeah, but you I can buy it. your business card. It may not work though. <laughs> It's probably not going to work. Yeah, unless you're a librarian, then it might. <laughs> right? Oh my gosh. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we covered it all again tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then some. <laughs> right. For, for the you. So I want to, I want to share something. Okay. So you know how when first thing, last thing came out and everybody was saying like last thing, especially that you won't notice how well it works until you stop taking it okay so though i didn't take it for like a month and i have been taking it for the past four nights now and i am sleeping like a baby yeah like oh, absolutely like baby yeah we yep. battle when you had when we each had two and <laughs> I, I scored I <laughs> so we yeah. split it and you're like i slept so good and i'm like right yeah. Right? So it, I think it really does work. I'm just saying. So if yeah. you guys are questioning or you haven't tried it, you might want to try it. Now, what is it again? Yeah. Will you remind, are you doing the first thing too as well or just the last thing? No, I have the first thing, but I haven't really used it mainly because I don't really need to be that focused in the morning these days. 
maybe I should start taking it. I don't know. <laughs> well, anyway, I would um, say, like, especially right now with everything that's run around. So the first thing is considered a health shot, right? So it not only has uh, nootropics in it for cognitive focus, mm -hmm. but it also have, has things to boost your immunity. And so there's several pieces to it. Um, and it, like I've been taking it every morning and I do it with cranberry juice, highly recommend cranberry juice. Um, mm -hmm. and I like it, it's not even like the focus. I just like feel, I don't know. It's just a different feeling after I've had it each day. Cause, um, there's days where I haven't, and I'm like, you don't have the same feeling. Um, but it, it is, there's all kinds of thing. That one has the most, uh, what do you call it? Supplements in it. I think there's like 11 or nine or 11 in that one. And so I would look up, it'll have it on, um, beach body on demand. Um, the difference, like what each thing is for, why they put it in the pack. And I would look at that because it is really fascinating all the stuff they put in. Um, and then last thing is meant for good sleep, falling asleep, better staying asleep, um, and then that has, um, oh my gosh, I can't remember like four or five different supplements inside of it. They, they said something like, if you took these all separate, you'd end up taking like 11 pills or something like that. It was a lot. Yeah. Um, but that one, like to me, I, I already felt like I was a good sleeper, but it's like, it's like, you just kind of melt into your bed at night. And then mm -hmm. like, I wouldn't wake up as much, like if the cat moved or the dog moved or, you know what I mean? If you hear so, like, you just kind of don't like come out of that sleep quite as easily when there's other distractions. It felt like to me. So are you still taking three of the last thing? Mm -hmm. Cause I've only been taking two. Mm -hmm. I think Bev, you take less. And, right? Yeah. When I wasn't, um, been a drilled, I yeah. would take one. I would okay. take one and it would do me just fine. I started at first going down to two, but then one was, was my happy spot. But as everybody has said, I'm, I'm quite sensitive. So, mm -hmm. well, I might start taking one because I honestly think I'm sleeping a little too much. <laughs> Oh, interesting. So, well, yeah. it's like yeah. it, what I was finding was still in the morning, I would wake up and I was not I would not feel rested. Like, especially when okay. I was taking three. And if I would wake up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, I would feel mm -hmm. slightly inebriated. Like I felt okay. like, like, okay, what's happening in this world? Like it was just very, like I couldn't. That's taking three or just still taking Yeah, one? that was three. That was three. Okay. And one, one's fine. Okay. One. Well then, and I'll the start time. doing the first thing and see if that makes yeah, do, do it for that. a period of time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And see, see how it goes. All right, yeah. ladies, I got to go. I need to eat yeah, my dinner now. Too. All right. Oh, well, take, a picture, yeah. take a picture. Take oh, a yeah. picture. Okay. Oh, I got to remember. Scott. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Ready? <laughs> okay. Uh, Happy yeah. birthday, Scott. Don't forget about oh, meal oh, prep thanks. on Sunday. Yep. I won't be here. Um, but... I won't eat. Well, well I'll jump if you're not on, cooking, but I won't be able to cook. If even if you're not cooking our, you know, the recipes on there, cook mm -hmm. whatever you want. And just mm -hmm. I would be there and you know, I would be because I love it. <laughs> I'm always cooking anyway, usually at that time, but we, we, we have a previous engagement. So. All right. We'll give you a pass this time. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> thank, thank you. Hey, Do you later. Have a good night. Bye. Good night. Bye.